How's it going everyone? Paul with Adaptable Survival. What I want to do in today's episode is take a look at the BPS Savage. Stick with me as we take a look at it. So let's take a look at the BPS Savage. Starting off, you will get this leather sheath for 40 bucks, getting a leather sheath and a full tang high carbon steel knife. Kind of hard to beat that. Uh, this is a dangler style sheath, so something to be aware of when you're buying one of these. If you buy one of these, I have used sheaths that ride higher on the belt. Comfort wise for me, just not it. Uh, I do prefer having a dangler. The knife itself, so these are made in the Ukraine. I know earlier this year it was kind of a slowed on the, on the availability, but you should be able to find them on Amazon. Uh, that's where I bought mine. It'll be in my Amazon store, uh, eBay, Etsy, as well as BPS Knives site um, as well. This is a full flat grind knife. So for survival knife, some people may not like that. Some people may like it. For me, it just feels more natural when I'm working with the wood. I don't feel like I have to really work the wood. I can just kind of naturally go with the grain of the wood. So something to keep in mind when you're looking at one of these. It's made out of a 1066 high carbon steel. So when I first read that, I had to kind of research a little bit to kind of understand what that was because I've never seen a knife uh, made with that kind of steel before. All it is is just a little bit softer than a 1095. Still extremely budget friendly. This knife does have a 90 degree spine on it, so you can strike a ferro rod. It, like I said, it is a full tang knife, so for 40 bucks, I mean, that's a killer deal. That's kind of the general theme with BPS knives. A lot of their blades are very budget friendly. The handles are a bog oak wood, nice and solid. Haven't had any issues with the screws coming out on there, anything like that. Uh, the blade is unfinished. I know some of the BPS knives that I, ha I do have that I've yet to use, do have like a chrome lining on them or a chrome coating. Uh, I will look into kind of removing that. If you have suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. But the BPS Savage does not have that. Does have a pretty significant drawback that I've experienced anyway. Uh, and I'll get into that in the breakdown. But what I want to do is baton with this, nothing crazy. Just how I would normally use it, make some feather sticks, kind of show the sharpness of the spine after a year of use, and then hop into the pros, cons, break down all that good so stuff. So all I got here is just a piece of cedar that I was carving on. And let's baton this down. That one kind of ran off on me still kind of come back in here have another crack at it there we go so with this being a 1066 high carbon steel knife maintenance wise gonna be really really simple I will talk about some of the surface issues I've been having with it towards the end but now that we got this split down I can just come in here plant that so this is honestly why I like having a full flat grind knife I don't feel like I have to work against the wood I can kind of work with it I've used Scandi grinds I've used convex grinds um, and they all work really really well it just I like to have something that work feels natural to me when I'm working with it don't judge me on my feather sticks not all bush crafty we've gone through this but you know, as you can see, I've kept a nice sharp edge on here. It's not super hard to keep a carbon steel uh, nice and sharp for whatever you may need. And then I can easily come in here with the spine and remove any of this bark if I needed to. Let's say if I was, you know, making 10 steaks or, you know, if the cedar was a little bit drier, I could turn this into some fluff to use for a tinder. So it showed you just a little bit of the performance. As I always say with my gear reviews, I'm not gonna dive into heavily in the specs and use the hell out of it on video. Uh, I do all that leading up to before I actually do the video. So with the BPS Savage, like I said, I've really, really liked this knife. Uh, the main reason I picked this up 
was I started brainstorming, uh, designing my own knife about a year ago. So I started looking at knife shapes that I liked to get in my hands so I can use them, different grinds, stuff like that. So I came across this, like I said, 40 bucks on Amazon. It's hard to beat that price for high carbon steel knife that's full tang, got a nice leather sheath with it, nice handles, uh, fit and finish is really, really nice. So I'll get this up here close and hopefully it comes in. But you can see some of the wear that I've had on, on the blade itself and then hopefully across the spine here. Hope that's all coming in. But you'll see down on this end some surface rust happening on there. So when I said I had some surface issues with this blade, the surface rust that I've experienced with this has kind of been a real pain. Now when I first used this last year, I think for a basic class in October, we got a light drizzle. I had a rain jacket on. Water never got on the blade itself. But the next day when I took it out, I had surface rust all over the place. Now, I remedy that now with just using roasted walnut oil and keeping a nice coating on here. But I've used this the last couple of weeks, last couple of classes, just to show you how easily it starts to occur on this blade. So after that first time I used it, I reached out to BPS Knives, said, hey, I'm experiencing a lot of surface rust with the Savage. Uh, is that a common thing that happens with this knife? Just to make sure that it wasn't like a common issue. They responded to me extremely fast, probably within a couple of hours and said, this was the first time we're ever hearing about it. It's not something that has been brought to our attention before. Uh, so they offered to send me a brand new one. And I said, well, there's no need for that. I can you know, take care of the surface rust on my own and just oil up my blade really, really well. So I will give BPS Knives a huge A plus for that customer service. For me, if a company is willing to send you a brand new product when there pretty much is nothing wrong with the product that you have, um, that's a solid, solid win in my book. So overall, I've really, really liked the BPS Savage. For 40 bucks, I mean, it's super hard to beat for that cost, um, how nice this knife has been. It's held up really, really well. I haven't had any edge rolling, chipping, anything like that happening to me anyway. Um, with the spine, with this being a high, car high carbon steel knife, I can throw sparks off it. So I've done flint and steel demos with this. I've just really, really enjoyed it. The one major drop I had is just a surface rust, which just keep your blade nice oiled up. You're never gonna have an issue. So I will have this in my Amazon link down below if you want to check it out for yourself. Um, tons of other knives out there. Definitely let me know some of your favorites since I'm still kind of in the research phase for the knife I'm designing. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you've gotten something from this video. That helps get some more eyes on what we're doing here at the channel. Helps bring more people into our community so we can learn together and grow together. As always, this has been Paul with Adaptable Survival. Adapt your mind, your body, and your gear.